Hey friends, welcome back to Rouse Rising. If you are new here, this is my channel. My name is Katie, and today we're gonna to be baking some sourdough bread, or rather, we're gonna be making sourdough. We're not actually gonna bake this bread today, but we do start the process early, early, early in the day because it does take a while, and it is kind of a process that we need to pay attention to. So for this batch of sourdough bread, I am making four loaves, or I'll make uh, three loaves and then two bits of pizza dough. And to do that, we start out with 11 the night before. And for our 11, this is a doubled recipe. So I did 150 grams flour, 150 grams water, and 150 grams starter, fresh sourdough, unfed starter. And that's what I just poured into my KitchenAid mixer was my leaven. And that sat overnight out on the counter. And when I added water to it, so we're going to add 950 grams of water to this double batch of sourdough. And when you add the dot water, the leaven floats on top. That's how you know that it is active and bubbly and going to produce a an excellent bread. So what I've done here is I've added my leaven and my 950 grams of water to this 1400 grams of fresh milled flour. This is a combination of a hard red wheat berries and hard white wheat berries. And there you're just gonna watch me knead it a little bit in the bowl. We're just getting this into a shaggy dough as you saw. And this is gonna sit in auto lays for 30 minutes. And that just allows all the flour to absorb the water. So I cover my bowl with a damp cloth. This is a flour sack towel and this is what I use for my baking. They work great. You can get them at Walmart in packs of 10 or any kitchen store. They work well for a variety of kitchen applications. In the background there I am measuring out about two tablespoons of salt which is 40 grams and 100 grams of water. So I'm going to mix that up until the salt dissolves while my dough auto lases in the background and then once it has sat for 30 minutes we're going to add the salt water to our dough. Now in this process when we add the salt water we're going to be squishing it into the dough. Some recipes call that you add all of the ingredients all at once but years ago about seven years ago when I learned how to make sourdough this is how I learned to make it. And I haven't strayed from this recipe because it works for me. It's just what I know and that's how I'm doing it. So when I add the salt water to this original mixing bowl, I use that salt water to kind of clean the sides, all the dried, uh, the bits of sourdough that were dried on. I just use it to get it clean. I scrape the bowl nice and clean. And then I add this to a glass bowl. The reason why I add it to a glass bowl is so I can see what's going on with my sourdough. I can see the bubbles. I can see the fermentation between stretch and folds. And my glass bowl has a wide rim. I can get into it a lot easier and perform my stretch and folds better with a glass bowl. So the reason why I didn't transfer it before adding the salt water was just to get my KitchenAid bowl nice and clean. This helps a whole lot to remove any bits of dough. And then we proceed to squish and squeeze the salty water into the dough for the next few minutes. And if you are one to get your children involved, this is a great time to get them involved. They love to squish their fingers into the dough. It's a great sensory exercise. It's great for your hands to get you a nice little workout. Once I feel like it's sufficiently squished, I do my first stretch and fold and I just really press down the dough when I do my stretch and folds to get the dough to laminate together really well. But after this sits for 30 minutes, it's gonna be laminated fine even if you don't press it down. We are gonna be doing this stretch and fold method four to six times. I usually aim for six stretch and folds in a two and a half hour period. So every 30 minutes, we're gonna come back to this dough and stretch and fold it. I wet my hands prior to touching the dough. This prevents the dough from sticking to my fingers. And you can see as I'm stretching the dough, it's breaking apart. It has not formed the gluten structure in the flour. So that is why we are stretching and folding it now to create that gluten structure. Some people add whey to their bread, to their fresh milled grain to give it that structure, that extra bit of gluten development. I now have fresh whey and I'm going to be incorporating it into my bread recipes. At this time I did not have it um, and so this was my first time using fresh milled grain to make sourdough bread. I have been using it in my bread machine bread 
but this is my first experience using it and I'm gonna tell you I love the way this dough felt it was so nice and fluffy and pillowy I did not perform a window pane test at the end of all of my stretch and folds and I wish I would have uh, it could have used some more kneading and gluten development again you can do things like add a spoonful of powdered whey to your flour to make it a bread flour um, because the fresh milled wheat doesn't have that same um, structure as a bread flour you would buy from the store because it's just straight up fresh milled. So I go based off feel as you heard me say earlier and I'm going to show you what this bread dough looks like at this stage and we're going to do this next stretch and fold and probably one to two more stretch and folds but you can see there's lots of tiny bubbles in there as well as some big bubbles i'm pressing down rather firmly on my dough between stretch and folds and that is to help move out some of the larger air pockets i don't like the large air pockets food jelly falls through so we press them down we mash them out and make the smaller crumb the smaller holes so that we have neater sandwiches with all these kids. It's less mess to clean up. I wet my hands between um, uh, before I put the fabric on, so my flour sack towel is wet. I'm pressing down the dough with wet hands. That gives it enough moisture to keep it from drying out on top in the 30 minute intervals that it sits and rests. The rest stage is very important. It helps the gluten relax so that you can stretch it more. And it also helps develop that nice sourdough flavor the longer you let it ferment. You do not want to over ferment your dough because it will fall flat once you put it in the oven. So there is a fine line in there with some room to play. <laughs> but uh, if, if you want a good bread dough, you're going to need to be patient and you're going to need to allow it that long fermentation process. So this next time I'm going to flip my dough out. You can see how nice and light, fluffily, fluffy and air bubbly it is. I'm going to divide this up into five pieces. Typically I would divide it up into four 710 gram bowls. Back in the day, I would have my scale out with a plate on top, making sure that I got each one of these the exact measurement that they should be. But these days, I realized that it really doesn't matter because I'm just feeding my family, so it can be off by a few grams either way. I added some oil back there to those Pyrex dishes, and those are going to serve as my pizza dough storage containers and then the other bread is going to be put in those baskets you see back there right here i am shaping the dough i'm doing my rough shape you do this first and then you allow the dough to rest for 30 minutes covered on the countertop and when i do my rough shape i slide the dough across the surface and that creates a tension which creates the nice round boule type shape that you are seeing here so this is in a little bit of a slower motion so you can see i'm holding firmly the back of the dough and i'm allowing the dough to slide under itself as i drag it towards me to build that tension i hope you can see well enough in this video i know it's a sideways view but some people often have questions about this. You can use your bench scraper to do this, or you can do like I'm doing it with my hands. This is the rough shaping again. I'm gonna come back to this in 30 minutes after it has rested from this vigorous shaping, pre-shaping. We are gonna come back to this and we are gonna do our final shaping. We are gonna cover this with a damp towel while it rests. We don't want a soggy wet towel, we just want it to be damp. So what I do is run it under the water. I don't get the whole thing wet, I just get the center part wet and then I wring it out and that helps distribute the water around and keeps it nice and damp. You wanna be using a clean towel, not a terry towel, but a flat weave towel. Okay, so I'm final shaping these and it's basically just a stretch and fold in all four directions 
and pinching off the seam and then I'm coating these in olive oil. I'm gonna cover them and put them in the refrigerator and we will use those for pizza dough or focaccia or whatever we wanna use those for. These last four bowls are gonna be turned into sourdough bread. We're gonna make a lovely little score on them when they go in the oven. But for right now, what I'm doing is just sprinkling a little bit of flour into my baskets and onto the top of my bread. I don't use a whole lot of flour because there's some in the basket that's gonna go on it as well. So I just uh, stretch and fold this in all four directions, making sure to pinch off the seam so that that doesn't split in the baking process. And I drag it on the counter like I did with the rough shaping. And then, as you can see, adding a little bit more flour and placing it into the basket. These are the plastic restaurant baskets. I do have bannetons that I like to use as well, um, but these baskets are more readily available locally to you, I am sure, as they were to me. I couldn't find bannetons anywhere, but I could find these baskets. I have lined them with a flat weave of a fabric and sprinkled it with flour, and this just helps the sourdough bowl maintain its shape through the long fermentation process. When I put these into the basket, I wrap the fabric around fairly tightly or snug, and this helps it keep its shape. And then when these cold boules of dough go into the oven, the coldness really helps them have a terrific oven spring, and that's what gives, it, gives this bread its rise. And this has worked best for me. I know some people just throw it into a basket. They don't wrap it tightly. They just cover it. And that works really well for them. For whatever reason, this is the method that works best for me is wrapping it tightly. These will then go into plastic bags and then into the refrigerator where they will rest overnight and for a few days possibly. Sometimes I bake the very next morning. Sometimes they sit in the refrigerator for a few days. So anywhere for 12 to 72 hours, 72 hours is pushing it, three days is pushing it. Um, you want to get these in the oven in the next 24 hours, I would say, 24 to 48 hours. You can push it to 72. I've done the pizza dough even longer. I've left my pizza dough in the refrigerator for a week and still made pizza dough successfully with it. So right here you see me turning out the long fermented dough it's been in the refrigerator, it's nice and firm, and I'm flipping it out onto parchment paper. The reason why I'm using parchment paper is because my enameled cast iron pan is all cracked and the enamel is flaking now, so this prevents the enamel from going into the bread. And it's just easier to transport my bowls. I just lift them up in the paper. They don't stick to my hands or anything, and I just throw them into the preheated cast iron pots that are in my oven. So my oven is preheating right now to 500 degrees while I score these. Small, not deep scores will make your pretty design. And then you want one major deep score in your bread that is deeper so that it can form that lovely ear that we can get on our sourdough bread. So you'll see my small little cuts are just little nicks in the top of the bread to give it that design. And then I do one major score Typically I do it down the middle. Sometimes I'll do it off centered, but you can score your bread so many different ways. There's so many beautiful videos out there and so many beautiful loaves of bread. I've made it look like a snowflake before. I've done some really interesting designs, but this is my most used design. It's simple. It scores the bread perfectly, leaves a pretty design and a nice ear. So you're going to see that here in just a minute when I throw these into the oven. In the oven, we have our Dutch ovens, our cast iron Dutch ovens, preheating to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we're going to put these cold bowls in the oven for 15 minutes in the covered Dutch iron pots. After 15 minutes, we are going to drop the heat down to 425 and cook them for 10 more minutes with the lids still on. And for the last five to 10 minutes, we are going to be removing the lids and allowing these to finish cooking for the last five to 10 minutes at 425 degrees. And that's just gonna finish them off and make them nice and golden brown. I hope you guys enjoyed baking sourdough bread with me today. Until next time, bye.